In recent times, geopolitical competition has been on the spotlight, especially among major global players, and uh, the African continent is not left out. Geopolitics plays a crucial role in shaping the African economy, affecting its growth, stability, and development. The continent's geographical location, rich natural resources, and strategic significance have made it a focal point for major global pairs. Geopolitics influences the African economy in areas like resource exploitation, trade and investment, foreign investment and aid, political stability and conflict, regional integration and cooperation, among others. With this, it depicts that it is a crucial moment indeed for Africa as the geopolitical dynamics in the global context is greatly influencing the African economy, both positively and negatively. So on today's compelling TV program, The Pan-African Debate, we want to dissect to what extent geopolitics is having a toll on the African economy and how African stakeholders can handle the pressure as Africa is now a key player in global geopolitics. This is the Pan-African Debate. You are most welcome. Hello to you, beautiful people of Africa. Thank you once more for trusting us this day as we are coming again to discuss issues of utmost importance affecting the African continent in particular and on this uh, platform, the Pan-African debate. Today, we want to look at the uh, dynamics of geopolitics and see to what extent these uh, geopolitical dynamics affect the economy of the African continent. Like we have underlined in our preamble, it is a, a tough moment and of course, a moment that the African continent is undergoing much pre uh, pressure as we see uh, that uh, there has been a hike in uh, geopolitical competition among global pairs, among world pairs, and Africa is not left out. What are the effects of what is happening on the African economy? What is the course of geopolitics uh, uh, in Africa? And of course, what are the uh, dynamics that uh, actually inculcate all of the happenings around Africa and how will this affect our political stakeholders and even the uh, uh, economies across Africa and that is what we are talking about does they looking at the role of uh, or the influence of Joe politics on African economy. It's a pan-African debate. It is an informative as well as interactive program and we're going to be together for two hours to discuss uh, this very important uh, program. And to do that with me, I have uh, this panel of experts uh, joining this day to analyze, critically analyze uh, the uh, impact of the influence of geopolitical competition of the gamer among global Purse and how it affects the African continent, which has actually uh, uh, been in the fore in recent times. Let's take you straight away to the United States of America. There we are meeting uh, Dr. Eric Eddy in his capacity as program officer at the Solidarity Center, Africa Department. Hello to you, Dr. Eddy. It's a pleasure having you this day as we continue to discuss issues affecting the continent Africa. Thank you, Clarissa. It's always a pleasure for me as well to be uh, on uh, this uh, show and panel. I just want to greet my uh, brother Elijah in Noaku, uh, Professor uh, Nubong, and uh, of course, you know, all of our viewers, watchers, and listeners. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, the con uh, it's a pleasure to be here. The continent is in uh, flux and reflux, to use a big word in here, and uh, it is the right moment to actually uh, discuss and uh, bring some sort of enlightenment and learn from one another. Thank you. 
Thank you too for accepting uh, this uh, around the vote today, uh, Dr. Eddy. Now let's move to Canada. We're meeting Mr. Elijah Inoku, joining as a researcher with Leeds University on African development. Hello to you, sir. It's a pleasure having you this day on the Pan-African debate. Hello, Clarice, and uh, tell viewers all over the world. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here one more time to discuss critical issues that are affecting our beloved continent that has always been, and uh, looking at uh, ideas on how we can move forward as a continent. Africa is one, and uh, wherever you're watching from, whether from South Africa, Kenya, Uganda, Cameroon, Nigeria, all over the world, Africa is one. Hopefully we can have a fruitful discussion and learn. And those who are listening to us, that's the most important. Those who are listening to us, those stakeholders that might gather some ideas on how we share together and put that into whatever agenda they have for Africa. So thanks for having me one more time. And I should thank you for respecting uh, this uh, appointment with Africa Media Television, uh, Mr. Elijah Inokur. And to South Africa, let's meet Professor Gabula Nobon, who is joining us in his capacity as a political economist. Hello to you, Professor. A pleasure having you once more on the Pan African Television. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Clarice. I'm glad to be back. It's been a while. Uh, and uh, I, I want to also thank and appreciate you and all the team at Africa Media for the work that you're doing to put the issues on the continent, of the continent on the table. Uh, good afternoon to your televiewers. Good afternoon to my fellow panelists. And I'm looking forward to our engagement indeed. I think it's a very interesting topic and I'm looking forward to our engagement. Thank you so much, Professor Gabela. Indeed, uh, it's been a long time, but we are glad to have you this day as we continue to analyze and give Africa's perspectives to what is happening in the global world. And our focus this day is on geopolitics. And of course, uh, with the narratives of the geopolitical competition uh, or dynamics across the global world and where Africa stands, we want to analyze how this will affect or is already affecting the economy of African countries. I will kick off with you, Professor Gabala, before actually looking at the areas where geopolitics or geopolitical dynamics have affected the economy of African countries. Let's understand the course of uh, geopolitics in uh, present day society. Well, I, I, I think that we, in, in very, uh, uh, basic terms are, are looking at the relationship between nations uh, and, and the extent to which uh, global shares of influence uh, sort of uh, affect domestic politics and, uh, 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 and, and relationship between domestic stakeholders and their interpretation of how they must engage with their various partners in very, in, in very broad terms. So, so within that, with the context of our topic and the context of Africa, we have broad, broadly recognizable shares of influence uh, in different sex, sex segments and parts of the, of, the, of the continent that are more present than others. Uh, in Southern Africa, we, 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 we fall more within the, the more uh, non-aligned sphere that, is, uh, that has our big conversation is BRICS, uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China. And uh, it, it's sort of the, the mainstay of the, the kind of foreign policy that South Africa is driving. And uh, a lot of the regions, a lot of countries in the region are looking to benefit from that, that uh, aspect of its, uh, of its geopolitics. Um, we know that as we go further up the continent, the influence in the, influence in the East is, is a little more, more diverse. Uh, I think there's a, there's a strong presence of, of China uh, much in, each, in East Africa and in, in countries in, in Botswana, in, in, in a bit of, uh, I think, Zambia, uh, in Tanzania, under Magufuli was a little bit more diverse. Yeah. Um, North Africa has a different sort of dynamics. You know, they, you have one segment of them that uh, are, are relating more to the Arab League and the, the Middle East countries. And you have the other segment of them that uh, fall under the European 
Union neighborhood policy. And then obviously in West and Central Africa, especially in Francophone West of French Africa, there's a predominance of the of the French, uh, as, as we have seen it. So yeah, some of the some of the very present entities uh, that, uh, uh, that, that, that influence the, the, the geopolitics of, of that region in terms of superpowers. But when you zoom on the continent and look at it in a very broad sense, you have the, the broad East and West divide, uh, and to a very increasing extent, the America versus China, and then the increasing creeping influence of, of Russia uh, when it comes to security questions and uh, political questions. Uh, you have that broad divide on the continent. When it comes to economic questions, I think the players are a lot uh, much more diverse. And so the standard single influence is no longer really obtainable anywhere around the continent. I think each, each of the regions and each of the countries are having an increased diversity of partners. But for the fact that the contestation seems to be between East and West, uh, when it comes to the economy, it seems to be between the European Union, the US, and China, that's where there seems to be some clashes. And when it comes to security questions, uh, I think at the moment on the continent, it's pretty much between France and Russia. So personally, I think it's already interesting times for Africa. Uh, but but I would caution, and I, as I think a lot of my partners would do, to say that it just all it presents is opportunity. It doesn't say much of any gains. There's nothing we can take to the, to the, to the bank yet as such. But it just positions us in a place where I think, personally, this is my personal view, I think we are in a better position in 20... Unfortunately, we lost to Professor Gabler, but we'll be coming subsequently uh, to you. We're going to continue in the same perspective with you, Mr. Uh, Elijah Inaku, as uh, Professor Gabela was underlining, we we're actually analyzing the course of uh, the geopolitics in the present society and bringing in Africa's uh, perspective, and you heard from his analysis, highlighting uh, the, uh, uh, the relationship between Africa and uh, major global uh, past in uh, this uh, uh, contemporary uh, society in the same light. You know, these major powers are engaging with Africa, and uh, can we analyze uh, uh, to what extent their engagement with the continent Africa is changing dynamics, be it in the political sphere, the economic sphere, and uh, the, the social sphere, uh, among others. How are these, uh, their presence uh, in Africa bringing uh, changing dynamics across Africa? Uh, Clarice, thanks for having me one more time. Um, I apologize that I want to start on a negative note that I do not see geopolitics helping Africa. And I will explain exactly what I mean, so that stakeholders can listen and have some ideas on how do we move forward. Indeed. Right from the time of colonialism, geopolitics has played a negative role on the continent of Africa. If you look at the colonization and the eventual, you know, partition of Africa, it was done, it was geopolitical stratification that took place, and each party was trying to grab their own uh, share of the cake. And when they partitioned Africa, you will see that there was no recognition of the cultural heritage. There was no recognition of the tribal heritage. There was no recognition of the identity of Africans when Africa was partitioned, such a way that you are going to find lines that were countries where, you know, ge uh, geographically speaking, across ethnic lines that do not respect African identities. That's why you're going to find African countries where you have, you know, if you go to Cameroon, for instance, you have Bulus in Gabon, you have Bulus in Cameroon. You go to Congo Kinshasa, you have Wutus in Democratic Republic of Congo, Wutus in Uganda, all around that region. And if you look at the conflict that is happening there right now, the fact that these geopolitical powers ignored the cultural and identity of Africans is breeding a lot of conflict on the continent of Africa. 
But today, as we speak, those conflicts are now coming up in different ways. So geopolitics has played a negative role on the continent of Africa. Now, on a positive side, has Africa ever taken advantage of geopolitical you know, positioning that seems to be happening on the continent? The answer is no. We have not taken advantage over the years. I'll explain exactly what I mean. If you look at you know, what was happening in the time of colonization, there was internal weaknesses within the African countries that contributed to the Europeans actually dividing Africa into parcel bits and pieces here and there. If you look at countries or a country like Ethiopia that did not go through that colonization, if you look at the internal strength that was existing within that country that helped them to fight and stand strong as one and they were not colonized, that is what Africa needs to be looking at as we discuss these issues on the continent of Africa. What is it that Africa needs to do to take advantage of the current geopolitical positioning that is happening in the world now? Thank God we don't have a hegemony of unipolar power in the world right now anymore. We have different powers coming into play. We have the United States coming. We have Russia coming. We have China coming. We have um, Asian countries like uh, uh, India coming. We have China. We have all these countries. The question that you know I'm going to be delving into today as my objective is, what is Africa doing to take advantage of these powers that are trying to strategize and, and have influence in the continent of Africa? Is Africa going to go through the same Berlin 1884 conference where they're going to you know, divide Africa into bits and pieces and this one takes its own path? Or is Africa going to sit on the table and say, no, this time around, we want a say on what's happening in Africa. It's our continent. It's our resources. It's our economy. It's our country. We want a say on what's happening. Or is Africa going to stand back and allow the same thing that happened in 1884 go ahead? Because whether you are talking about resource exploitation, whether you are talking about proxy war on the continent of Africa, whether you are talking about foreign aid, whether you are talking about trade, some of the things that you mentioned, whether you are talking about diplomatic maneuvers, or you are talking about political stability on the continent of Africa, you talk about debt relief and all this financial vulnerability that Africa is exposed to. There is geopolitical positioning that is taking place. Is Africa ready to take its position and say, hey, guys, we own this continent. We need to have a say on the table on what happens in Africa. Or, or is Africa going to take a step back and say, oh, OK, we are a poor country, highly indebted. We are begging that our debts to, sh should be structured. We are begging that our debts should be relieved. We are begging that, you know, if you come to, re to, to, to exploit our resources, we just want that meager 10% as long as you can give us 10% out of it. Is Africa ready for the new discussion? Is Africa ready to be on the table? Or is Africa still going to be standing back and let the continent to partition one more time? That is what interests me. And I hope as we go ahead, we're going to have a fruitful discussion on what is the way forward for Af Africa. I'll take my leave for now. Okay.